Hello and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. In late November, two explosions rocked the calm morning of Jerusalem. Charges were detonated at bus stops several kilometers apart, killing two Israelis and wounding 18 others. Since then, additional acts of terror reoccurred, claiming Israeli casualties. Meanwhile, the IDF, ISA, or Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Units have entered into their ninth month of nightly counterterrorism activity under Operation Wazebreaker with no end in sight. Will Israel prevail in its battle against perpetual terrorism? Joining us from Central Israel is Major General and Reserve Gil Shona Cohen, a former IDF Corps commander and commander of the IDF military colleges. Thank you for joining us, General. Good also evening. Jo Good evening, indeed. Also joining us from elsewhere in uh, Central Israel is Brigadier General and Reserve Yossi Kupelwasser, who is a project director on Middle East developments at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs and who formerly served as head of the Research Division in the IDF Military Intelligence Directorate and Director General of the Israel Ministry of Strategic Affairs. Thank you for joining us as well, General. Thank you for having me. And as always, uh, indeed, as our editor at large and to a host of Watchmen Talk, Powers in Play, and so much more, Mr. Emil Oren. Emil, give us a broader understanding on the current state of play in Israel's unrelenting battle against terrorism. So Israel uh, has uh, three or four, depending on how you count, different uh, fronts in its uh, action against Palestinian uh, terrorism. One is Gaza, which right now, and for most of the preceding uh, year and a half, has been relatively quiet. So we can set that aside. The other front is uh, the West Bank, which, uh, of course, is also divided into various districts. Sometimes there is um, uh, problems, there are problems influencing uh, interregional affairs. Sometimes one region um, is dormant while the others are active. There is East Jerusalem, which has been annexed by Israel. The uh, Palestinians there are Israeli residents, not citizens. They can move freely about. They can uh, actually drive uh, wherever they want in Israel, not only around Jerusalem, but up to now, most of their terrorism has been confined to the Jerusalem metropolitan area. And the fourth uh, front, uh, at times, is the uh, Arab population of Israel proper, which sometimes uh, join the Palestinian uh, brethren. Right now, and um, what started um, in the spring, as you said, uh, we are into the ninth month, there are occasional terror acts, both against the uh, settlers in the West Bank or whoever drives uh, the uh, roads there, and against uh, Israelis uh, west of the so-called uh, Green Line. The uh, uh, particular problem uh, that uh, the um, simultaneous uh, terror attacks pose for Israel is that had they been uh, aboard the buses and not uh, at bus stops, we could have gone back to uh, the horrific sites of uh, what took place here some 20 years ago, and more than that, uh, during several uh, phases uh, after the uh, Oslo Accords. And that uh, would have necessitated a strong military operation in the West Bank, which Israel doesn't want to undertake because the Palestinian Authority, weak as it is, is still a thin veneer between uh, chaos and some governance. Add to that, the delicate political situation in Israel as a new government is about to emerge. Indeed. Well, I'd like to start with a question to General Cohen. Since uh, the United Nations started recording uh, the Israeli uh, operations in, in the West Bank, uh, actually in 2004, 2005, uh, this year we have seen more operations uh, than any of those years, uh, according to uh, the latest uh, reports coming out of the UN, uh, speaking about uh, uh, roughly 150 um, you know, Palestinians, uh, uh, including the majority of them, uh, terrorists uh, who uh, have utilized uh, their um, 
uh, capacity to execute shooting attacks and, and other acts of terror uh, in this context. Uh, we've seen more than 3,000 uh, arrests of suspected terror operatives and much more uh, behind the scenes, of course, that has not uh, come to the public media. Uh, and therefore, I'd, I'd like to ask you, with calls in Jerusalem and all over Israel, for that matter, which has also translated into political shifts, uh, within the construct of uh, uh, the anticipated government uh, looming here in Jerusalem. Uh, is Israel, after so many activities, not doing enough in, in its efforts and unrelenting efforts day in and day out uh, to combat terror elements throughout uh, the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley? Actually, uh, as you described, IDF and the other security services doing a lot and quite uh, effectively, but yet what is really missing is the capability to really uh, conceptualize that there is here a strategic shift and uh, it is quite uh, complicated to define what is definitely uh, the essence of that shift. But if we are going back to the year 2004, at the moment that uh, Abbas uh, took the uh, control upon the Palestinian Authority, became the president after Arafat, he recognized that the uh, terror activities uh, as a campaign brought to delegitimation of the whole Palestinian uh, struggle, and therefore he decided to make a shift to just stop the terroristic attacks in the Israeli centers, bases, and to transport the effort to a political international struggle. Actually, what happened in the last half year, maybe more, that we must recognize a new shift, that they are really creating a kind of transportation to a new campaign with a new essence of activity. And yet we did not recognize the main purpose of this campaign and the whole interest behind the whole uh, uh, different uh, individual activities. General Kupelwasser, your take on this? I yeah. think that uh, what, what we're witnessing is uh, another wave of uh, terror. And we have uh, witnessed such waves uh, since uh, the end of the Second Intifada and the Second Uprising back in 2007. There were several uh, rounds like that. Uh, we are in another one. Uh, it reflects mainly the uh, frustration of the Palestinians with the fact that uh, Israel is uh, moving forward and they uh, don't find any support from the Arabs that, to, to the extent that they expect it. And uh, they are uh, frustrated also with the situation inside the Palestinian Authority, with the fact that uh, the Palestinian Authority de decided to postpone the elections that were scheduled for last year. And, uh, and the weakness of the Palestinian Authority makes uh, it easier for uh, Palestinians to carry out their attacks. But what connects all of that, and the reason why we have repeated waves, is that uh, the Palestinians remain committed to their narrative. Uh, and this narrative says that the Palestinians are involved in an ongoing struggle against Zionism. And uh, they believe that this uh, eventually this uh, struggle will be successful. And uh, even right now they are frustrated with the way the things are going. But in the long run, this uh, is bound to be successful. And they believe that the way to reach the success is with ongoing terrorism. And uh, Abu Mazen was really be in favor of uh, some kinds of terror and not others. I don't think that he preferred the political activity as, as is, as the sole uh, way of uh, promoting Palestinian goals. He thought that the combination between uh, political activity, diplomatic activity, and uh, what he calls uh, popular resistance, which is uh, the, using of, the use of uh, uh, non-lethal uh, weapons uh, in the in the struggle, like stones and the Molotov cocktails, uh, this was a preferred way of action from Abu Mazen's point of view. 
And the, from time to time, he also was uh, in favor of uh, stabbings and uh, car ramming. And we just saw today uh, a car ramming uh, in, the, in the West Bank. And uh, this, the, this is the message that Mumazen sends to his people right now. And uh, that's why what we, and we, we see that the Palestinian Authority, uh, with the, uh, its commitment to pay salaries to the terrorists that are arrested by Israel, or those who lose their lives during the terror attacks, uh, is uh, encouraging more terror, and the, right now they are in favor of uh, moving to uh, another stage, which is shooting. Uh, in, usually they're against it. Now they are in favor of that, and they support the people that carry it out. And that's why people get more uh, 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 ready to carry out such terror attacks. And you see a rise in the number of the attacks. And the fact that we carry out uh, operations by the IDF and the uh, Israeli Security Agency is uh, uh, helping a lot to have less terror attacks than what the Palestinians would have tried to do had there not been this uh, activity by the IDF. But uh, even with this activity, we still have a lot. And we are moving from stage to stage. We saw a lot of shooting attacks, but uh, now we also saw uh, an explosive uh, uh, planted in, the, uh, in Jerusalem. This is another stage, and I hope it's not going to, uh, that we are not going to see many of those, but uh, as far as I understand, it's, uh, once it happens, it may repeat itself because it clarifies that there is a new stage in this battle and more needs to be done by the IDF and by the ISA in order to uh, make it uh, come to an end. We have to make clear to those who are involved in carrying out these attacks that this is not going to be uh, to have any impact on the situation and that uh, there's no no benefit out of carrying it out. Mr. Owen, I just uh, yes, General. say one word transformation we are witnessing transformation in all uh, dimensions and we must bring a kind of explanation for that indeed well uh maybe amir owen will be able to provide that explanation but i'd, I'd like also to note uh the isa also prevented a uh, palestinian laborer who has uh, uh received uh, uh authorization to work in israel from the gaza strip who was recruited by the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, an Iranian proxy, uh, to try and uh, conduct another bombing attack in Israel, which indicates a certain trend, or is this something that uh, uh, may be just as a, a orchestration of various explosions that uh, the uh, Iranian proxy is trying to execute in Israel at this stage? So there are uh, two dimensions to your question. The question of Iranian involvement and the question of workers with permit being able uh, to cross freely. And for the second uh, dimension, over the years, so many hundreds of thousands of workers have crossed uh, into Israel. They have made a living and one person probably provides for six, eight, ten family members and uh, it's a very important part of the Palestinian economy, which the Israeli government in general, the Israeli defense establishment usually is in favor of. The security service, Shin Bet, looking at the very narrow problem of foiling an attack, would like to have less permits uh, given so this is a, a usual tug of war between various components uh, of uh, the government. But there is another conventional wisdom, not scientific explanation. There is something to the biblical cycle of 20 years, a generation. Um, last week, we marked November 29th, the uh, day the United Nations uh, uh, had uh, voted on the partition resolution, resolution 181, which set the stage for the creation of Israel as well as Palestine, but the Arabs did not create uh, Palestine. 20 years later, we had the Six Day War, which started because the Arabs never accepted Israel as um, a fact and uh, would not coexist with it. I'm saying it because at the turn of this year, the Israeli Defense Forces started uh, to prepare 
for marking the 20th anniversary of Operation Defensive Shield of 2002. And while they were in the works for that, the new terror wave started. And that is because there is a new generation of Palestinian youth um, whose um, imagination um, has not been seared by, by the events of 20 years ago. And if you look now at students at uh, institutes of higher learning in the West Bank, where Hamas and other organizations are most active, or even Fatah youth, they do not care that their elders were punished and deterred by the Israeli operations. Apparently, each generation must undergo the same experience until there is a political horizon and a political solution if one is ever found. Well, we all know what uh, Albert Einstein said about trying the same method over and over again so, and expecting so we should, a different result. So we should try another, another method or at least give some hope uh, that uh, something um, uh, will happen. And by the way, the, the uh, analysts... It takes two to tango. They, nobody in uh, Palestine uh, dances the tango. There is the hora or, or other sorts or debka. But, but um, the, uh, the problem uh, that Israeli government analysts point to is that while, yes, for the 18 years that Abu Mazen Abbas has been in power, uh, there is less terrorism than during the Arafat years, this most recent wave started with Donald Trump, his vision for peace um, that Israel at the time responded to by claiming that it was going to annex parts of the West Bank. Nothing came out of it, but... Uh, Except for peace with the United Arab Emirates, no, no, Bahrain, in, in, and so on and so forth. No, nothing came out of it within right. the Palestinian areas except for rising tensions. Indeed. Well... Uh, these rising tensions have been indeed in the making for quite some time now, and I'd like to ask uh, both our distinguished generals, uh, considering the fact that under Operation uh, Wastebreaker, we see the majority of operations taking place in the northern Samaria area and the Janin Nablus uh, uh, cities or towns or whatever you want to call them these days. Uh, it seems like these areas, according to uh, the latest figures, also of the Palestinian authorities, uh, but also uh, here of the Israeli defense establishment, there are roughly 25% of uh, the populations there are uh, affiliated with the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad. 20% uh, are affiliated with the Islamist Hamas organization, uh, meaning that there is quite a substantive group there that is uh, quite committed uh, to uh, trying to expel Israel and uh, fighting uh, the, the uh, narrative of uh, uh, Zionism, which ultimately uh, uh, dictates uh, the, the right of the Jewish people for a nation state in their ancestral homeland. Uh, is this something that uh, coincides also with foreign actors trying to stimulate, uh, and when I say foreign actors, even Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas in the uh, Gaza Strip, uh, trying to steer the public, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, supportive of their aspirations uh, in uh, the Samaria region. General Cohen, your take on this? We must pay attention to uh, sources of inspiration. One of them, uh, even though it is quite far away, is uh, the winds of war coming from Ukraine. And of course, an era like that, with a lot of uh, war activities, could uh, enhance young people to think that time is arrived to take weapons and to join in their own struggle. M more than that, we are facing a new era regarding uh, the mass of weapons in the hands of uh, the Palestinians, especially in the north side, in the north side of Samaria. A, a lot of smuggling of new weapons. A, excellent weapons came from Jordan, from other places, and they really are more powerful from a, the military a, apparatuses of the Palestinian Authority. 
Therefore, we are really facing, as uh, Amir said, a new generation, new inspiration, new capabilities with new weapon, all that together with capabilities of uh, Instagram, TikTok, and other sources of inspiration, creating a real new struggle. General Kupelwasser, your take? I, I think there is some inspiration from foreign forces, including Iran and, and uh, Hamas uh, from the Gaza Strip and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad from the Gaza Strip. And there is quite a uh, wide support for these organizations in the northern uh, Samaria area, both in Jenin, especially in Jenin, and to some lesser extent in, in Nablus. But uh, I think that. Uh, uh, they don't preach the, the public something different than, the, than what they get from uh, any other source, including the Palestinian Authority. They are all committed to the struggle against Zionism, as you said, until its demise. And uh, they uh, shout uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. So they don't fight uh, and carry out terror attacks just in order to uh, kick the Zionists out of the areas controlled since by, the, by Israel since 1967. But to get rid of uh, the uh, Israel, Jewish presence in uh, uh, the land of Israel altogether, that's uh, that's what they believe in. They what uh, they don't need a lot of uh, encouragement for coming from Iran or from uh, Gaza in order to be committed to carry out these attacks. The, the tactics have changed, but the commitment, to the the purpose of the struggle has not changed. It's remained the same. And uh, the reason why, and as I said before, these are the reasons that uh, now we see more of that. It's this frustration that I was talking about. It's this weakness of the Palestinian Authority in the areas where they should have uh, been able to uh, provide more uh, law and order. And, uh, and what we see is that the, the, those who carry out the attacks are not Hamas or Islamic Jihad. They are... Uh, uh, unaffiliated to any terror organization, they do that because of their commitment to the to the narrative. Uh, I don't agree with uh, Amir about the role of the Trump plan. The Trump plan went unnoticed from the point of view of the Palestinian terrorists. Uh, the, this round of uh, terror became, started in late to, uh, 2000. Uh, uh, 21, long into the Biden period. What uh, frustrated them was the fact that Biden uh, did not want to uh, start on any initiative in order to solve the problems and to give the Palestinians what they wanted. They had expectations from Biden. Uh, these expectations didn't, uh, were not fulfilled. And this uh, was another reason for, for that uh, frustration. Not a major one, but an additional one. And uh, what we've seen is that since the late 2021, coming into 2022, the uh, Palestinian terror com uh, consistently uh, became uh, more and more uh, dangerous. It started with the terror attacks inside Israel, uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, in Hadera, and so on and so forth, and uh, in Be'er Sheva, and uh, later on concentrated in the northern uh, Samaria area because as a uh, uh, an effort to prevent more attacks inside Israel, the, the Israeli security forces, be it the IDF or the ISA, decided they have to operate in the northern Samaria in order to prevent terrorists coming from there to carry out attacks inside the uh, Israel proper. That was the uh, that was the way the things developed. And let me remind you that uh, the terrorists that uh, carried out the attacks inside Israel, some of them were Israeli Arabs, and some of them were coming from the northern uh, Samaria area from Jenin. And uh, this uh, forced Israel to start an operation that uh, waves breaker. And uh, we see that uh, there's a lot of activity to take care of by the break waver, uh, wave breaker uh, in, uh, following what, uh, what's happening in the, in the, area, in the territories uh, that uh, are governed by the Palestinian Authority. And that's what we, what we are witnessing. Indeed, of course, not to forget that, uh, uh, as also General Kupilasso just mentioned, uh, the one in Be'er Sheva, the terror attack there, was by a, a Bedouin uh, who affiliated himself and was incarcerated for a period of time uh, for uh, his think, affiliation uh, to the Islamic State. Jonathan, Excuse me? Jonathan, I think in this respect that uh, in this uh, terroristic effort, 
you see the, the way all the uh, arenas that you mentioned before join hands. You see people from all over the Indeed. Palestinian, all of those who uh, identify themselves as Palestinians carry out, carrying out attacks regardless Absolutely. of where they live. With that being said, and uh, that was uh, uh, my point where I was getting to, is that uh, the one in Be'er Sheva was by uh, a supporter or uh, inspired by the Islamic State. Same uh, happened uh, when the other Israeli Arabs who define themselves as Palestinians, of course, as General Kupilas also mentions, uh, were two individuals who uh, went to Khadera from Umm al-Fakhim and uh, perpetrated heinous attack, they're also inspired and uh, declared affiliation to the Islamic State. Uh, the two in Tel Aviv and in Bnei Brak were indeed from the northern Samaria region uh, with uh, family ties uh, to Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which of course uh, led uh, the, the security establishment uh, here in Israel to define that territory as the most explosive not only because of that, but also for other reasons. Uh, but we're pretty much at the end of the program, Mr. Owen. Closing sentence. We are generalizing. There are particular reasons, tribal, family, regional, refugee camps, many... Uh, Leadership competitions at this stage. Of course. Stage. The result is what uh, we said. And if the new government in Israel is portrayed, not necessarily true, but portrayed as uh, willing to change the status quo on Temple Mount, we may be in for an escalation. Well, time will tell, uh, but this is all the time that we have for today. So I'd like to thank uh, General Cohen and General Kupelwasser for being part of today's panel. Uh, I'd like also to thank Mr. Amir Oren and to thank our viewers as well. And we'll see you next time for yet another episode of Jerusalem Studio. Until then, Shalom.